Henry Big. We went to episode of Let's Play the Ta Sorry. Playing the episode of Let's Play the Turing Test. In this episode, we'll do the um, special optional room for Chapter 7, as well as probably in the episode on this episode, very more than likely. This is another unique little, um, what do you call it? This is a unique little solution here. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> this one, if you took. How have you seen this before? But it's like, that's just weird. Put that there. You block the door, and you got just enough space to shoot that in there. And in here, we got a whole lot of reading to do. Uh, where do we even start? Yeah, okay. Okay, where are we going here? Was that up there? Get, oops. The Imitation Game. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? The new form of my the problem can be described in terms of a game which can be, can be called the Imitation Game. It is played with three people, a male, A, a woman, B, and the interrogator, C, who thinks, who may be of either sex. The interrogator stays in a room apart from the other two. The object of the game is for the interrogator to determine which of the other two is the man and which of it is a woman. He knows them by labels X and Y, and at, at the end of the game, he says either X is A, and Y is B, or X is B, and Y is A. The inter interrogator is allowed to put questions to A and B. Now, we now ask this question. What will happen when a machine takes the part of A in this game? Will the interrogator decide wrongly, or as often when the game is played like this, as he does when the game is played between a man and a woman? The question remains in place of the original can machines think? The question and answer method, it seems to be suitable for introducing almost any one of the fields of human endeavor that we wish to include. This does not wish to penalize the machine for its ability to shine in beauty competitions, nor to penalize a man for losing to a race against an airplane. The condition of our game makes these disabilities irrelevant. The witness can brag if they consider it advisable as much as they please about the charm, strength, or heroism, but the interrogator cannot de de demand practical demonstrations. The game may perhaps be crit criticized on the ground that the odds are weighted too heavily against the machine. If the man were to try and pretend he to be a machine, he would clearly make a very poor choice showing. He'd be given away at once by slowness and inaccuracy of arithmetic. May not, many, may not machines carry out something which ought to be described as thinking, but which is very different from what a man does. This objection is a very strong one, but at least we can say that if, nevertheless, a machine can be instructed to play the imitation game satisfactorily, we need not to be troubled by the objection. It might be urged that when playing the imitation game, the, the strategy for the machine may possibly be something other than imitation of the behavior of a man. This may be, but I think it's unlikely that there is any great effect of the kind. In any case, there is no in, in, intention of investigation here for the theory of the game. It will be assumed that the best strategy is to try and to provide an answer that would naturally be given by a man. Excerpts from Computing Machines and Intelligence, Alan Turing. And the Lord God formed man to dust and the ground, the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became living soul. Hmm. I now proceed to consider options composing to my own the theoretical objection thinking as a functional Function of man's immortal, immortal soul. God has given us an immortal soul to every man and woman, but not to any other animal or to machines. Hence, no animal or machine can think. The hands, heads of in the sand objection, the consequences of machine thinking would be too dreadful. Let us hope that 
and believe that they cannot do so. The mathematical objection, there is a number of results of mathematical logic which can be used to show that there are limitations to the powers of doc, doc, discrete state machines. The best known of these results is known as Gardell's theorem, 1931, that shows that in these sufficient powerful logical system statements can be formulated that which can neither be proved or disproved within the system unless possibly the system itself is inconsistent. The argument from consciousness, the argument is very well expressed by Professor Jefferson's Lister oration for, from for 1949, which I quote, nor not until a machine can write a sonnet or compose a, compose a concerto because of thoughts and emotions felt and not by the chance fall of symbols. Could we agree the machine equals brains, that is, not only write it, but know that it had written it. No me mechanism can feel and not merely artificially signals, but easily contrivances, and easily contrivances, I should say. Ple pleasure at its success, grief when its vows views, and warmed by flattery he made miserable by the mis and warmed by flattery and he made miserable by the mistakes be charmed by sex, be angry or displeased when he cannot get what he want, get at once. <sighs> arguments from various disabilities. These arguments take the form, I grant you that you cannot, can make machine do all the things you have mentioned, but you will never be able to make one do X. Numerous features X are suggested in the context I offer in the selection. Be kind, resourceful, beautiful, friendly, have initiative, have a sense of humor, tell right from wrong, make mistakes, fall in love, enjoy strawberries and cream, make someone fall in love with it, learn from experience, use words properly, be the subject of its own thoughts, have um, as much diversity as a behavior as a man, do something really new. Lady Lovelace's objection. The most detailed information of Babbage's analytical engine comes from a memoir by Lady Lovelace, 1842. In it, she states, The analytical logic has no pre pretensions to originate with anything. It can do whatever we know how to, to order it to perform. Her italics. The statement is quoted by Hartree, 1949, who adds, This does not imply that it may not be possible to construct electronic equipment which will think for itself, or in which, in biological terms, one could set up a con conditions, condition reflex, which would serve as a basis for learning. Whether it is possible in principle or not is, is for its stimulating and exciting a question suggested by some of these recent developments. But it did, did not seem that the machines constructed or projected the time had the property. Arguments from continuity in the nervous system. The nervous system is certainly a, not a discrete state machine. A small error in the information about its size of a nervous impulse pinging upon a neuron may make a large difference to the size of the outgoing impulse. Maybe argue that this being so, one cannot expect to be able to mimic the behavior of the nervous system with a discrete state system. <sighs> Real heavy stuff here, you know. <laughs> um, over here, some more notes and some over there. That should be it, pretty much. This room. There's nothing I can think about. Hey, there's more over there. Ah, okay. Cyril, thought experiments are important because a lot of time you cannot carry out the actual experiment, and this is true, not only in philosophy, but in science as well. So when Einstein said, imagine that you're sitting on a beam of light going into outer space, well, that's a thought experiment. He wasn't saying, going to say, let's get on a beam of light. Of course, you miss the point. If you say, well, we'd fall off, or it would be too cold. So thought experiments are always useful, and you can test your concept by imagining what it would be like if such and such were the case. Well, in this particular case, I imagined 
what it would be like if I followed a program for answering questions in Chinese and giving back answers in Chinese, even though I didn't understand the word Chinese. And that is what's a very useful thought experiment. So it enables us to see the compile screens by itself into thinking. Ooh, wait. Consciousness. Consciousness exists only insofar as it's experienced by a human or animal subject. Okay, now grant me that consciousness is a genuine logical phenomenon. Well, all the same, it's somewhat diff different from any other biological phenomenon because it all exists insofar as it's experienced. However, that does not give it the interesting status. You can't refute the existence of consciousness by showing it that it's just an illusion because an illusion reality distinction rests on the difference between how things consciously seem to, to us and how they really are. But where the very existence of consciousness is concerned, it just consciously seems to me that I am conscious, that I am conscious. You can't make delusion reality distinction for the very existence of the consciousness that way. You can for sunsets and rainbows because the distinction is between how things consciously seem and how they really are. Consciousness is a biological property like the like digestion or photosynthesis. Now why isn't that screaming seeming screamingly obvious to any anybody who, who's had any education? And I think the answer is the twin traditions. On one hand there is God, the, the soul and mortality that says it's really not part of the physical world, and there's the other, the almost as bad tradition of scientific materialism, materialism that says it's not part of the physical world, they both make the same mistake. They refuse to take consciousness on its own terms and the biological phenomenon like digestion, or photosynthesis, or mitosis, or minosis, or any other biological phenomenon. Oh, okay. Oh, Lord. I think I really have conscious states to remind everyone of the fact I asked my teacher, my readers, to perform a small experiment of pinching the left forearm with the right hand to produce a small pain. The pain has a certain sort of qualitative feeling to it, and such qualitative feelings are typical of the various sorts of conscious events that form the con content of our waking and dreaming lives. Such events are data which a theory of consciousness is supposed to explain. In my account of consciousness, I start with the data. Dennett denies the existence of data, so I put it cl as clearly as I can. In his book, Consciousness Explained, Dennett denies the existence of consciousness. He says correctly that there, when I write, wrote my review, I took, the, his, took his book to the to be his definitive statement of the position on the Chinese room, and he did not consult his earlier works. In fact, I did not know that he had produced a total of seven published attacks on this one short argument of mine until I saw his letter. He now claims to have refuted all three premises of the arguments in, in 1987. I have reread the relevant chapter of his book, found when he did nothing of the sort. Not that he, nor did he even make a serious effort to attack the premises. Rather, he, he mistakes mistakes my position as being about consciousness rather than about semantics. He thinks that I am only concerned about to show that the man in the Chinese room does not consciously understand Chinese, but I am in fact showing that he does not understand Chinese at all because the syntax of the program is not sufficient for the understanding of the semantics of the language, rather consciousness, conscious or unconscious. Furthermore, he proposed, presupposes a kind of behavioralism he assumed that a system that behaves as if it had mental states must have mental states. But that kind of behavioralism is precisely what is challenged by the argument. So I have to confess that I don't find that the weakness of his arguments, but his recent book is helped by his 1987 arguments. To perform the heretalics statement, quoted by Hartree in 1949, which adds that it does not apply that there may not be possible to construct electronic equipment which will think for itself. 
I wish you, oh wow, this is all mixed up, isn't it? Wait, this is a repeat. Page two. Hold on. Okay, so this is, um, okay. Where did that one come from? That's just a mixed in. And this is all stuff that can't be read here. Well, I'm going to skip this one over because this is confusing as all hell. So, but yeah, that's a lot of stuff here to be read. Read here. I think I missed something, but eh, oh well. I'm kind of wasting the time as it is, so let's get on the road here. We got uh, puzzle 6, puzzle 7, puzzle 8, puzzle 9, and the last puzzle 10. This was. Right, pain in the ass. Alright, so we need to put Homeboy over there, right. It's another one of those puzzles that took me a bit to figure out. Oops, I need him facing this way. Okay. Okay, now I need... Uh, this one. Hold on, I'm missing something or not. Yes, I am. What am I missing? Put this over here. Close enough. Good work. Okay, let's power this bad boy up. Yeah, he gets dropped up and down a lot. Um, I mean, I'm missing something, aren't I? Ah, uh, I forgot something. You wait right there, boy. Right back. I need one more sphere. And that one is... Where? Um, I think it's over there, right? But how did I get over there? $64,000 question. Take that one. Oh, wait, no. Yes. Right, okay. Now I remember to hide myself with this. Dig down to there. And... Um... Ah, humbug. I'm not going to do this one now. Uh, my life. Oops. I'm going to drop that now, too. <laughs> I'm gonna get over to the him over there again. Um, how do I get back to him? He's down there. I can't get to him. Um, he's down below. Oh, wait, I can do this, that next, don't I? <laughs> okay. Then back over here. Grab one off of him. One off of that one. Let him drop down. Okay, there we go. So, okay, I 
Oops, nope, not yet. Oops. Ah, let me drop off here to that. That's fine. Uh, okay, now I got a another sphere right there. I can now power this thing. Mm. I got one more. Hold on. Think, 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 think. Dummy here. There we go. Where's my other sphere? Still there? Oh, yeah, still there. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, right. Hmm. Hmm. Missing something, aren't I? Yes, I am. Terp. Keeping the order out of out of keeping it out of order. <laughs> Temporarily. I don't need that anymore. Need him up the stairs. Right here. Now I can go over here. the platform, tap back to the pot, close that, and away we go. <laughs> Ava, you must learn to control him. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, Ava. I am your friend. Like a threat, didn't it? Oops, not only one to do, but. Again, reminded we hear the turrets. All right, that's as simple as that. Well, again, reminding you he has turrets he can use. Organic life is fragile. This is the problem with humanity. It doesn't realize its own fragility. It has been programmed by a messy biological process that favors the survival of the individual over the survival of the group. You don't know that's what people think. I say what I see. 
You're not even alive, so you know nothing about death. All right, that was war. That's right. Um, Okay, I need it over here. Okay, like so. And which controls this? That thing, right? Hmm. How did we accomplish that? I can't take that with me hmm trying to remember this in solution here it's been a hot minute I've done this <laughs> That controls that. That'll retreat. How do we put a weight onto that though? We don't have a bot to do it. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ha 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 ha. Right. Right, 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 right. Okay, so do that. Then we will go over here. Put that like so. And now that's over there. Like so. There we go. <laughs> I remembered finally. That opens up like so. Save the crew. Life has worth. They deserve a life outside of this planet. Do you know what happens when this organism attaches itself to a growing child? Do you know what happens when this organism attaches itself to a cancerous cell? No, you do not. You are naive. You propose saving the crew as if it resembles a rational thought. Your words are emotional platitudes rooted in selfishness, self-preservation, and fear. I need to get them home. It is not your job. So, uh, so that one there, 
This one actually did solve on my own eventually. It's like took me forever and a day, but like. Okay, so we use the battery on this one. Okay, so I gotta do drop down here. Mm, temporarily. I need this one for a second here. It's gonna do, let me do something rather neat. Grab that one, and because it's temporary, it takes me back over here. And this one again. Okay. Now I temporary that one, permanent that one, and out we go. Hey, buddy. Your survival is of small importance compared with the survival of humanity as we know it. Okay, let's see. What else do I need to know here? Uh, nope, okay. That's powering that, so that should mm, turn on and off. Mm. Okay, hold on. Nope, okay, that doesn't work networking. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Now let's see. Where is it? the Tom get over to there? Getting at this side, okay. Oops. Ah. Uh, that's not what I intended. Okay. Intended is getting it out far enough to get to uh, Tom, or yeah, I can do it that way too. Right there. Okay, stay there. All right, so. Now, she's going to be the uh, toggle for this, so... Like so. Need him over here. Okay, so... See through the window? Yes, I can. Okay. So, okay, now, whoops. Get her butt up here. All right. Um. Hold on. Do I need to be? No, I need to be over here. Up here, right?
Okay. Now, before I continue, the this could be the ending now. The ending, epi ending the epilogue, whatever you call it, the last part of it. There'll be a lot of dialogue coming up pretty soon. So, um, one thing, uh, to the ending now, we'll have four options, four choices. You know Tom can use lethal force, and he has turrets. So you have a choice, so your choice, you can either shoot Ava, leave Sarah alive, shoot Sarah, leave Ava alive, shoot both of them, or do nothing. For those four, they, the surviving member or surviving members will shut down Tom and presumably, because there's no epilogue after that, presumably they're going to go back to Earth and ruin Earth, or you can shoot both of them. That's your option. So, and that's, I can explain that right now. Now, let's get on the ending here. And you'll see what I choose, or you probably know what I'm going to choose. <laughs> also, be sure to stick around after the credits. I've got one more thing to do after the credits. Do I know how to do it, though? Sort of know how to do it. I haven't done it yet. But we'll see. Hopefully. <laughs> There's one more secret to be shown. I've got to go back a couple of chapters, well, several chapters, to do it. Maybe you made it. Welcome to the end of civilization. Two weeks ago, we discovered an organism here. Buried in this ice, we found an organism that repairs DNA. A cure for aging, a cure for death, immortality. It runs through our blood now. Tom wants to bury us here with it. Okay, now hands are off the controls now. Off the keyboard. I am, I'll still keep the mouse moving, but it's moving me forward now, so... The ISA have ruled that we have transgressed ethical boundaries by exposing ourselves to this organism. They believe the organism is too dangerous to return to Earth. They've sent you here to stop us ever leaving Europa. But, Ava, we have a cure for the greatest evil that faces humanity. Death. We have the fountain of youth, and together we can return it to Earth. Real fight, really fight me. Keep my keep my mouth being my camera looking forward. Like looking, 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 look, look down. Oh, now I'm locked completely out. So Tom placed a mark in your hand, a biometric chip with which he can control your every movement and thought. It is wound into your every nerve, every fiber of your hand. With an electromagnetic field, it can be temporarily disturbed, but to remove its influence permanently. It must be taken from your hand. Give me your hand. Do you want me to set you free? Yes. Okay, now we're kind of bouncing around randomly. Again, this game's doing this on its own. Ava? Sarah? What are you doing here? We're shutting you down, Tom. Ava, be careful. He has a live weapon in here. Everything I ever did, I did for good. This organism, it cannot return to Earth. It would cause great suffering. A cure for death? It would end suffering? No. Cancers that never die. Endless illness, sickness, poverty, overpopulation, mass starvation. You cannot control this. You will not save the world. You will damn it. Once we've shut you down, we're going home. <laughs> Ava? 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 Wake up.
Okay, three months until after the end of the uh, credits. <laughs> Alright, I hope you stuck around. Got one more little thing to do here. I hope I can remember how to do this. Well, I've done it before, but I looked it up. Chapter select. Chapter 2. Crew, crew quarters. Now, clear back on the crew quarters. That sh there should be a little note you need to find. This is the crew's quarters. It looks abandoned. Hmm. That wasn't Sochi's room, was it? No, um... That continues on. Nope, don't go that way. Obviously. Um, well, somewhere around here is a note. Okay, that was the captain's quarters. Yeah, it's gonna be like on the inside wall. I got a picture here of its location, which is great and all that, except, you know, gotta find it. 
much luck here so I'm going to assume it's probably here I'm just missing it completely but anyway I got code right here so go back to quit uh, chapter select prologue start doesn't start me from the very, 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 very beginning. <laughs> That'd be annoying. It did. Okay. Morning, Eva. Your wake-up has been sanctioned by the ISA. We lost contact with the ground crew 450 hours ago. We have tried to establish further communications, but we are not getting any responses. We need you to investigate. Okay, doesn't it make sense to do visual checks first? We have already looked at the data. The ISA has made the executive decision that you report to the surface post haste. You are our emergency response. What exactly is the emergency? The ground crew found an organism the ISA believed to be dangerous. We need to re-establish communication. And then back over here, we had the door we could not get through before. It was, it, it the best solution was just to take to the end here. We know everything now they didn't know before. So, let's uh, see... Seven, six, one, seven, three, two. Okay, that's the code. Through here is the captain's quarters. Um, door has been locked. Tell operation room locked. So, can't get in there. When uh, anything dangerous, everything must not leave Europa. We must not be destroyed. Crew should be encouraged to continue studying Organism 119. Any attempts to quickly leave Europa should be just encouraged. That's from the ISA directly. The crew did not seem to be responsive to our action thus far. We need you to wake up Ava. She should be sent to the surface to investigate. Tom, the crew, did not seem to respond to our action thus far. We need to wake up Ava. Okay, I'll kind of repeat. And of course, want us. So we want them to stay and investigate, you know, the, further on the um, 119. Try learning more about it. Okay, let's see. Final log of Captain Daniel McLean. I don't really believe in a god. If there is one, I. I hope he's forgiving. Maybe Sarah was right. Maybe we should go home. There's just too much on the line here. I... I used to dream of exploring the stars. Being humanity's great hope for knowledge. This is no boy's dream. I hope you understand why I did this. If you're listening, Ava, just go to the surface. I didn't have the strength. I am sorry. 
Yep. That's the final. Here we go. Okay. Daniel McLean, from two executive orders internal. To make concern, I'm not sh sure the record shows my ultimate most respect and loyalty to the ISA. I encourage you to read the reports of my exemplary performance as the commander of this mission. However, I must announce that, to my shame, I have not been able to control an uprising of the Europa ground crew. Despite ISA directives and the ground crew team has sought to leave Europa and return to Earth, they have compromised most of the ship's security as soon as I'm convinced that they have the capability of stage return to Earth, the, the, the technological operation machine permitted me trans to transit to the Fortuna. From here I am requesting a manual override for the technical operation ma machine. I know the technical operation machine is not permitted to harm any human life, but I have to put an end to this mess. So... He actually gave. Hmm. Interesting. The Canadian flag. But yeah, that's the final message. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. You guys have a great day. Take care and goodbye.